Okie doke, so bear with me here. I'm still trying to figure out um, camera angles and all that kind of stuff. And yes, I can see that uh, seems to be still crookeder and a dog's hind leg and everything. And I will be playing with the zoom a little bit, but I wanted to uh, just give a bit of a, uh, I guess, what what do they call it? The grand strategic look, and then I'll zoom in a little bit more. It'll be more for um, here, uh, Jeff, uh, which... Um, as I've mentioned before, is going to be uh, the Kriegfrosch and uh, just a lot of stuff that's been going on around here. And yeah, I've made some notes, thank goodness. But the first thing I'm going to mention is that, uh, hold on, I'm just putting my footstool away. Um, first thing I'm going to mention is that uh, Can Games sent us out uh, the very first official, hey guys, um, get ready to start getting, you know, your games ready to, to host uh, in May. Excuse me, I hope I don't slurp my coffee, I'm sorry. Um, let's see if I can find the find it here. Uh, there you There you are. This is the fun thing I thought was kind of neat. Uh, anyways, it says, 20, uh, Gentle Souls 2022 held promise to be snatched away. However, as 2023 comes to a new year, we will resurrect can games because they were so close and then they got freaked out by uh, another wave or whatever the heck it was. But then it says here, um, uh, we will continue to be cautious but cannot let the one ring rule us. I was like, oh, come on, man. Awesome, man. Thank you so much. So uh, there we are. Um, <laughs> Yep, and don't you worry, guys. I, I, yeah, they seem they really want people to put the boat out, so I don't think that's going to be a problem. I'm sure lots and lots and lots of people are going to be into it. Also, uh, I'm just saying this is going to be like I'm just throwing that this like a long lure out. I don't even know if anybody's interested. But there's somebody on uh, BGG that uh, in in Der Velkrieg, um posted a fan-built uh, scenario called the Battle of Wuj. For, uh, which would have been in October 1914, yep, if I remember correctly. Uh, sorry, November to December, sorry. Uh, anyways, it's not very long, it's only six turns, and uh, I don't know if it's boring or not, but, uh, and you would need the Eastern Front module, because we would need um, the Galicia and the Tannenberg maps, and you also need to get grab some counters from the Serbia uh, game. So you would obviously need the, the Eastern Front. Um, excuse me. And here's the Wikipedia thing if you wanted to. Uh, maybe I'll post the little doohickey thing. But, you know, um, that would be something I would want to play with somebody else uh, if you ever wanted to get into, like, a different type of, like, a very small little scenario. And I would want to do it non-vassal. And um, you know, it doesn't mean I'm abandoning the Ken. No, no, no. Never in a trillion years. On a side note, I'm glad I mentioned uh, Ken because... Um, Ken is completely correct about uh, the fa the new Fatal Alliances map. I'm sorry. Uh, the mountains are god-awful. I got the map completely wrong. When I do um, a peek at my at my Fatal Alliances, which is called Fatal Alliances 2, I think, or something like that, way back when. Um, yeah, I, I completely... I, got, I was thinking of a completely different map. So when Ken was mentioning that the mountains were disgusting or like horrible looking, I, I was looking at the map that I thought... He was talking about which is you'll see uh, it, it is also a compass games uh map i do believe um and world war one but uh i think i'll take a look um anyways he's right uh god damn it basically it, yeah those mountains look horrible well it, it to me reminds me of it's almost like you took bits of the vistula river from Turfell Creek and just made them brown and stuck them together kind of thing and said, da da, there's your mountain. It's like, oh, Jesus. Excuse me. So, yeah, I can see why Ken was... Uh, so, Ken, if you're uh, watching this, yeah, you're not being uh, whatever. You're being completely on the ball, man. Uh, what else am I going to mention before I start talking about... Uh, and maybe I'll start, you know, I'll start zooming in fairly, fairly soon. Uh... I have to remember that the primary focus is to get to Mount Doom over here. Uh, uh, hold on, I got my footstool and bring it, maybe just zoom it in because we don't need so much. Uh, don't need the big on thing. But I do want to make sure that I make, uh, I have this bit here, this battle. 
that I saw. It's just an opportunistic battle. Uh, the reason being is, yes, I'm learning. Uh, let's see, I just want to make sure. Okay, let's stop there. Yeah, that's, I think, good enough. Um, I hope. I'll find out later. Um, yeah, this was an opportunistic battle. So when I was looking here to figure out how to get um, the various components of the uh, German expeditionary force, yeah, part of, you, part of you may think, why the hell are you doing this? You could be, you know, there's a gazillion troops over here. You could be bringing them to, you know, to turn into the Kriegfrosch. Yeah, but that would kill the narrative, so, so that's not happening. Um, anyways, I'm going to get off my footstool. I don't need to stare at your flipping mobile phone. Um, so when I was looking into here, I went, oh, wait a minute. Here's an opportunistic uh, attack. And the reason being I say an opportunistic attack is because I can't let the Russians start building up a nice little defense in the river. Screw this crap. Secondly, um, this is also going to help me kind of fo get them to focus on here already um that yeah that's going to be a biggie uh for me so that's why i started looking at these things i i don't think you're going to be able to see the a b c d e f g things i don't want to start farting around with the uh moving the arm i've got it clamped hold on i'll try to do a little bit so let's see where can you see here just okay so yeah so so it's a, it's a bit of a uh, bit of the eighth and a bit of the uh, of uh, command, uh, core command one. But remember, uh, the way it's going to be set up is the eighth army, Hindenburg and the eighth army are going to be in control. Like they're going to be coordinating everything. Anyway, so I thought, remember, concentrated attacks. I don't have enough supply points. I don't have enough uh, strength points to start willy nilly going all across this, these huge beautiful lines. So I can move this guy from here to here. The uh, number eight whatever he is, um, with the two strength points over, so I can kill the river bonus. I was going to do a three-pronged attack, and then I went, oh my god, you know how ni you know how nice it is to feel knowing that you're starting to think? Anyways, uh, I was going to do a three-pronged attack here, and I went, wait a minute, Chris, if you attack from here, that means he can use the woods as a defensive bonus. Screw that crap. So i I just going to attack here. Kill the river bonus, and all they get to use is the broken train, which only gives me a minus one. So if I bring this guy down, that'll be eight strength points, and I'm guaranteed to inflict at least one hit, no matter what the hell happens. Um, and since the Russians have uh, have to are forced to retreat on one third of their um, uh, uh, of uh, injury, like a, a inflicted injuries um i i don't know what he's got there the russians have but i know they've been doing the same trick as me and that's thinning thinning their line to spread out uh so odds are he'll need to have four strength points sitting there i doubt it which means at the bare minimum if i don't eliminate that unit the bare minimum uh that unit will be forced to retreat uh, I'll have to bring in uh, the headquarters, uh, the army, uh, the core HQ here, over to here, which is great. Uh, right into Wuj. Uh, that'll protect them a little bit, and I can supply those four strength points. Uh, oh, shit. I can remember it's core HQ. I'm only allowed to uh, uh, supply. Shit. I'll have to look into that. Ah, oh, damn you to hell. I can't remember what it is, but I don't think I can do all eight strength points at once. Oh, shit. And even if I had two core, uh... oh, Lord of mercy, man. Uh, anyways, like I said, this is a side. Uh, I hate. Think uh, yeah, it sucks when you think I've got a really good plan going. I'm like, uh... but at least it, it's I, I guess the best thing now is to find out now rather than I'm starting about the roll dice, which has happened before. And then get awfully ticked anyways. So that's that's my plan. It's to push and push right away. Oh man, you know what sucks? I'm already starting to notice and I was looking at the at the reinforcements. Okay, I understand. Okay. What's happening now is I've looked at the amount of uh convertible fortress strength points even after one third that get turned into um 
available uh, replacement unit strength points. There is more replacement unit strength points available than there are uh, infantry units to deal with them, in a sense. Uh, especially with the Germans, just due to the fact that the Germans uh, have a lot of their strength points locked up in in you know big divisions, uh, like eight strength points, nine strength points. Uh, uh, it sounds great for moving around, and that's where we're going to get into this other thing about moving around. Oh, God, here goes my notes. I'm going to have to reread the notes anyways, but well, it may be a regurgitation of what I'm saying, but that's the way it goes. Um, I'm already starting to see, how, like I'm starting to view, which is, yeah, it's going down this realm of reinforcing yet again, this game is starting to turn into a uh, strength point game kind of thing, uh, pushing towards there. It's almost like an ivory soap thing, you know, 99 and 90, whatever, freaking soap. Um, I'm starting to view... Uh, divisions not as uh combat units i'm starting to view them as uh strength point transfer units for christ's sakes because uh, with the uh you know the way you can do some crazy stuff with recombination and divisional breakdown um that that's the way i'm starting to see things especially when you start looking at the fact that uh, some of the german units such as uh, number 20 and number 15 here, the 49th and the 50th Reserve Infantry Divisions, um, they, um, oh, wicked, of course, here yeah, I was looking in the wrong place. Oh my God, I'm so focused. I've been so focused on divisional breakdowns with the Russians over all this time that I, I need to, well, you'll see in a minute, but I need to, in the end, when we get to the Kriegfrosch in the, the launching spot over here, um, I'm not going to need two divisions. I just need, if, effectively, I only even really need one regiment. I don't want them in combat. If they start getting into combat, it's over. Uh, this is column movement straight up. There you go. Boink. Done. Everybody else is to push everybody away. Uh, like free reign. All you, you know, in you go. Um, so I don't need supply points and I don't need a big whatevers. So I was like, okay, you need to start break. When you get there, you're going to, like I've been timing everything here, uh, trying to break up. I'm going to have to break up number 20 and number 15, which are the 49th and the 50th Reserve Infantry Divisions. And I've been so focused on Russians. I've been looking up on Wikipedia and I can't find them. I'm like, what the hell? It's driving me up the tree. And I'm like, oh my God, now it just dawned on me. Thank God I did the video. I'm like, well, it's the wrong the wrong side you retard but anyways so i'm just having some tea uh coffee third cup jesus h and i haven't even gone to my second sleep yet holy f anyways so these arrows are showing me and yeah i've got the counters going up to show me where uh the spots are are going to be but i've got them written down we'll go over them in a minute so there we go opportunistic attack focus on these guys but I'm sending this guy away, which means I'm now starting to weaken this position. And I'm a little worried that the Russians may start uh, potentially doing a counteroffensive. I don't know. Right? Because there seems to be a... Well, there is. There's a, a new sheriff in town, and that's uh, Nikolai Protopopov. Like, uh, because... Uh, um, uh, uh, what's what's his face? Samsonov is toast. is gone. Been uh, sent back to... Uh, <laughs> damn! <laughs> oh, good Lord. Anyway, so... Um, I'm I'm worried here. So what originally what I wanted to do is send the 49th and the 50th uh, Reserve Infantry Infantry Divisions number 20 and 15 uh, this way toward getting towards rail as quickly as possible, and then off we go. But what I think I'm going to do is put them here. Yes, I know it's it's Russian rail. It's not my rail, but I'm just putting them there, and then we're going to go that way. And they both have five movement, man. Yes. Um, which gives me seven movement points for column movement, man, uh, instead of six. Um, I'm just going to use them as a deterrent. So that way, when the Russians come by, they could say, oh boy, looks like maybe the Germans are really here to, to put up a fight. So they may not want to push, I'm hoping, I'm hoping. Yet, as well as with the, the attack here, there's too much to spread out, I'm hoping. Um... 
Also, when we get down to it, I'm sorry, this is just the way it is because of the timing of the way this game is. Like I said, with it, with it being too many available Fortress Strength points for, uh, you know, as replacement units to do something with them, unless there's just going to be this churning. There's just not enough time for this scenario. You're going to run out of turns. Um, you you would have to, uh, as far as I'm concerned, I would have to start getting into divisional breakdown like there's no tomorrow. Every single time, though, lately that I start looking at, oh, I've got to pop up more core HQs, I just get this vision of Ken way off in Hong Kong just frowning, going, oh, God, another core HQ. Um, but it's like, man, I got I to gotta do what I got to do here. So, uh, anyways, I, I'm starting to time how, like I said, how um, the, comp oh yeah, and I'm also going to, like, you can, there's no more need for the, um, is that the 17th engineering regiment? Hold on, I think so. Hold on. Uh, yep, it's the 17th in infantry uh, uh, engineering regiment. Um they're uh, now going to be reassigned to 8th Army. Excuse me, and like I said, they're going to start converting the rail from Wuj, um, well, obviously, down, all the way from here, and then go down there and eventually meet up to Chechiva. Remember I was saying... Oh, sorry, you can't. Here, I'll go back out a bit. Uh, hold on. I'm trying. Um, yeah, to Chechiva here. Uh, and then meet up with the Austrian engineers. That's going to take a long time. And yes, I know this scenario would be over with long, long, long ago. But, I've, you know, that's the other part of the narrative that I'm just going to play the way it is kind of thing. So, okay, right, let's get to the notes and see what happens. And I'll go back to a little bit better of a shot, I hope. Okay, where are we here? So you still got the combat. Yep, I think that, that I think that's a good one. Can you see? Can you see Mount Doom? Goody. All right, so here we go with my notes, and I'll just blah, blah, blah away, and then we'll, uh, whatever. Oh, yeah, and then I've also did a list of magic numbers. Uh, uh, oh, maybe we'll go into the magic numbers first. And I'm sure I've missed a lot of things for the magic numbers, but um, maybe it'll help, help out things. So eight is the number of turns remaining for the central powers to get this done for the exam. Well, it's the scenario and the exam. Uh, Twelve is the German rail capacity. And man, is that going to get chewed up quick. Now, what the heck does d d um, 12 divisions mean? Uh, it means, um, I'm sorry if this isn't working right. Uh, 10 supply points equals one division. HQs and core HQs up to and including 10 supply points equals one division. Engineers equal one division. Brigades equal one division. Regiments equal one division. Under strength units equal one division. So that's, you know, like holy moly, man. Uh, in other words, your rail capacity gets chewed up real quick. Um, one tenth movement point. The movement rate for rail for the following units. Infantry combat units. Replacement units. Core HQs. That's a biggie. Supply point markers. Another biggie. One sixth movement point. The movement rate for uh for rail for the following units, army HQs, cavalry, artillery, engineers. Uh, one, it costs one movement point to entrain. Costs one movement point to enter an enemy zone of control. It costs one movement point to leave an enemy zone of control. Sorry if I'm sounding like a, a teacher or whatever, it's just the way I talk. It will take one turn to get all four cavalry divisions arriving as reinforcements on the 02 November turn at Hex 0118 to get to the launching point towards occupying Bialystok or something. So 0118 is over here. I can see it. Hold on. I'll do that crazy funky thing again. Hold on. Oops. Jesus Murphy. So 0118 is right over here. And uh, uh, we got to get over to here. And we can do it in one turn because it's... Um, Yes, it's one sixth um, their movement rate, but cavalry move at six. So you're there, you're there, man. Trust me. Which I think is kind of a strange wrinkle, but such is life, eh? 
And where am I here now again? If I screwed you over. Mm. Still see Mount Doom. Yeah, let's go with that. It, like, it seems like it's uh, pretty darn good. Uh, one. We've still got some more ones here. Uh, it will take one turn to get the cavalry to occupy Biel Bielostok from the launching point. So from there to get to there to at least it will... T I can get them to there using column movement. Boink. Done. I need to seal off these rail lines. Lickety split bobbick trick. It's got to be like... Because once, like I said, once the Russians clue into what the hell's going on, I'm sure they're going to be like, but I have to at least hopefully put in to spots that uh, they're no longer able to react or they don't have enough to react with. Uh, and it's, you know, that's that. I, I'm hoping to God. Anyways, it will take one turn to entrain the 20 supply points appearing in Breslau, 0607. Uh, the Galicia map, and moved by rail to 9th Army in Konigsberg, 1506, uh, uh, the Tannenberg map, or any amount of supply points from 1 to 10 inclusive, as the supply points can be divided up immediately upon appearing in the um, 01 November turn. So let's uh, see if I can, I don't know if you can see Breslau over here. Oh, wow. I'm surprised. And then Konigsberg's over here. So... That can be done in one turn if needed. Oh, that was impressive. I didn't expect that. Hold on, I'm gonna drink this pseudo cold coffee. And I do not like cold coffee. I don't know what people are into this ice stuff. Different strokes for different folks, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, number three, it'll take three turns using column movement to get the Kriegfrosch from the launching point to Mount Doom. It will take three turns to get the entire Kriegfrosch, number 72, 20, and 15, to the launching point. The bare minimum amount of movement points it takes to move out of one enemy... Oh, sorry, and that's a new one. The bare minimum amount of movement points it takes to move out of one enemy zone of control and then into another enemy zone of control. Um, three. Because you, you need to move one just in a clear hex, one to move out of the enemy zone of control, and then an, uh, another movement point to move into it. Two, the number of divisions the Germans can rail on their own single track lines. Other, other ones can only do one. Uh, the number of counterattacking strength points that can be supplied using one supply point. Uh, and then I, uh, I found more fours, and it was like, oops. Uh, the number of movement points away uh, an HQ can be to supply an attack fully uh, with one supply point. The number of attacking strength points that can be supplied with one supply point is four as well. The number of turns the Russians will get uh, three more entrenched positions, 1903, 1904, and 1905 Tannenberg. Can you see them? Where's my... Funky. I can't really see where's my. Hold on. No, you can't. Hold on. So they're going to get uh, three more positions here. Three more entrenched, in, entrenched positions here in four turns. Not good. Uh, six. We might as well keep it here because that's going to be part of it. Here. And here, two more uh, entrenched positions that uh, the Russians will have in six. It's also uh, the number of hexes most infantry units get using column movement, except for some of those beautiful German ones that have five movement. So let's get back to... Uh, boom, 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 boom. Where are we here? That's pretty good, I think. Alrighty. One half... German units are forced to retreat if they would suffer one half or more of their current strength points. One third. Russian units are forced to retreat if they would suffer one third or more of their current strength points. Eight. The number of hexes away an HQ can be a way to fully supply a counterattack. Seven. The number of MPs, movement points, some German infantry units get using column movement. Nine. The number of movement points cavalry get using col column movement. Zero. It's the number of movement points the following get using column movement. That's because they can't use column movement. HQs, artillery, supply point markers, and engineers. 
Also, zero is the number of hexes that can be moved across a major river from one enemy zone of control to the other. You can't do it. 153 is the number of demoralization points that the Russians need to accumulate just for both sides to break even. And, of course, 97. Remember the 97th, always. Uh, what other no notes do I have before I go off into Wonderland? Um, I have to remember that the primary focus is getting to Mount Doom, which means that all I should be concerned with is getting to the Kriegfrosch to the jumping off point, Hex 2309. Uh, no later than 04 November turn. That means the Kriegfrosch has to start the 04 November turn at Hex 2309 and not arrive by then. I've got to get them there by then. Cannot arrive later than the 03 November turn. Also, we'll need to transfer the six supply points to 9th Army or any of the supporting Core HQs uh, from Core HQ1. Uh, I don't need them. So give, give, give them to somebody that can. Uh, I'm also noticing, yet again, I'm falling into the trap of conventional thinking when I start going down here and I get all flustered. In a good way, man, I love this. This is good fluster puzzle fluster or whatever you want to call it uh like a good stress like you know if i'm gonna like all right six months of this i would be like ah. um what the hell i just got sidetracked yet again for christ's sakes um yeah the conventional thinking i get flustered and i'm like chris don't worry about it this is all that matters it's all that matters everything else is just window dressing but i still want to learn all the puzzle things of you know, oh my God, I got to move this, you know, on this turn, that turn, whatever turn. Oh, here's the other thing I want to do for deception as well. Uh, and it's a magic number, 24, because that's, you know, I could divide by three. That'll be eight uh, uh, re um, replacement unit points. I'm going to um, not strip these garrisons. I'm going to strip this dude pretty early on, but leave these two guys here till the very end to kind of make it look like to the Russians that um, I'm not, I'm, I'm I don't want to do anything here. Like I'm very concerned about protecting the border. I'm also going to leave this whole area as free as possible for a long period of time. I really want, like I said, want to focus. I also have to concentrate. That's the way it is. But I want them to think, I don't want them seeing this is what I'm trying to say. Right. Uh, that's the main thing until it's too late. I certainly hope so. Uh, yeah, that's the whole thing here. The Lots and Garrison Corps uh, area, this bit here, and then this uh, this entire chunk I'm calling the Breslau Garrison Corps. You know, like I said, and this is all done by uh, Charles Tortoise here. Tortoise here, uh, a kind of crazy relative of Charles Latouris. Um Also, uh, the cavalry do not show up until the 02 November turn. Um, but I'm okay. Uh, I was shocked that they were able to move in one turn because all four divisions are going here. All four cavalry divisions. Two up here, two down there, and away we go. They're going to spread the love, uh, you know, the enemy zone and control love and try to slow things down. Then I'm going to start streaming some infantry here. Like I said, one of the things I want to do is I don't want to just say, oh, you're way the hell out over here all by yourself. No, uh, I'm going to make it that they always have to make sure they're back to four movement points to another friendly unit. So that's going to be the, the line of communication train, is what I'm saying. None of this uh, all the way, at least for this special operation, if that's what you want to call it that. Uh, yeah, and like I said, I don't want to, I'm not, I want to keep this nice and quiet here. Um, I want to just pretend that this area, uh, you know, I'm just using the lakes and the fortresses and the river um, as a, um, you know, no, 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 we're, nothing's happening here. Russia, we're, we're, we're wonderful. Uh, I think that's it, really. Uh, it was probably a hell of a lot longer than I expected. Oh, well. Um, I say no, well, God, I sound like a flippant piece of shit. Um, yeah, I uh, hope you guys are doing well, and um, hopefully this makes a little bit of sense. And, uh, you know, things are clicking. Uh, I was amazed that I thought I was going to already do a combat uh, right off the bat, but uh, what a bummer that... Uh, there's just not going to be a lot of strength points um, available. Um, but like I said, i got to stop thinking about the conventional thinking bit and just go, um, 
No, no, no. This is it. Uh, and I'd still, I, you know, I like I said, I don't think in the long run when I get we start calculating the demoralization points at the end, I still think the Russians are probably going to win. But uh, I think, like I said, in the longer ramifications of it, what would have happened if, excuse me, if, um, you know, if the Stavka had take, uh, fallen and Brusilov, uh, here, let's go back out. You know, what would have happened if Brusilov over here had to surrender? I mean, there would be no Brusilov offensive. And, you know, on and on and on and on. There's so many things that would have just, uh, you just don't know. Um, and I love that. I just love it. Um, okay, nope. that's it. Jeepers jumping.